I tried to explain it, Andy, but Mickey Callaway, what he was talking about right there, what exactly happened? Well, this is confusing. You had a bunch of people who do this for a living in our newsroom a few hours ago staring blankly at the television screen trying to figure it out. So it's tough. But basically, the long and short of it is, as Callaway explained it, there's two lineup cards. One of them is printed from a computer. Uh, the other copy's handwritten. The handwritten one goes and gets taped up in the dugout. That was what they were looking at. Uh, the official one is the one that's printed from the computer. The wrong lineup got printed. So the computer lineup uh, was the one that went officially to the umpires, got printed, and was wrong and ended up, as Callaway said, probably costing them the game. Now the question becomes who's at fault for this? Callaway did his best there to say, me, 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 it's on me, da, da, da. Obviously, that was the talking point. Uh, technically, the buck does stop with a manager in any situation. Also, Usually, the bench coach, in this case it would be Gary DeSarcina, is the one responsible for actually getting the lineup card together. Like when Bob Guerin was the bench coach, he used to do this really fancy calligraphy thing, and that was his deal. The lineup card is often the bench coach's uh, domain. So you could look at DeSarcina. Also, Ruben Amaro Jr., the first base coach, was the one who actually delivered the lineup card out, out to the field today. Uh, <laughs> Callaway was obviously not revealing who did what and when. We have no Zapruder-like film of this uh, incident, uh, so Callaway's going to fall on the sword, as he should. Uh, but that's the skinny on how the lineup card gets printed and distributed. We needed the skinny because, as I'm sure a lot of you, I'm sure, were at work, missed this whole thing. All you knew was that the Mets batted out of order. But, Todd, so we don't know necessarily who is to blame, as Andy said. Mickey Callaway, though, took the blame publicly. Right. The reaction in the clubhouse now is what? Uh, the reaction is um, probably disbelief at this point. It's yeah. kind of like, hey, if we were 20 games over 500 and up by 10 games and this happened, we'd kind of shake it off and, and figure out, you know, somebody to joke about it and move on. But right now, it's, it's another glaring thing going on. And I think one of the things that to note, I mean, it sounds like an episode of Clue, by the way, and, you know, somebody's got a candlestick and involved somewhere. <laughs> Just but, a little complex. You know, back in the day, the old days when I played, when there was no cell phones and iPads and that kind of thing, the manager actually was had... Was there a, electricity? Oh, on occasion, yeah. We, yeah, on occasion, otherwise it was day games. But um, on occasion, they would have a lineup pad that they would hand write, and beneath it, like a check, would be three carbon copies, a pink, a yellow, and the white. Pink would go to the umpires, yellow would go to the opposing team, and the white would be taped in the dugout. So they, you knew that they were all the same. And then they would tape it next to the big one that you see them handwrite, and you would see the manager go before the first hitter and check to make sure that was right. So that was their checks and balances. Maybe it's better than a, than a computer check and balance. Technology is going to be the ruin of us all. Yeah. That's the that's really the that's the thesis of what happened. Take today. that, Moneyball nerds. Go back to the carbon coffee. But by the way, John... Mickey Callaway's decision-making was close to being a topic on our show before this happened. So this isn't a good look for Mickey Callaway right now, especially the way the last few days have gone. No, when you get out to the start like the Mets did, Mickey Callaway cannot make a wrong move. Now all of a sudden, the Mets are not doing very well, and something like this occurs, and you're like, oh boy, you start thinking twice. Similar to the way Gabe Kapler started in Philly, everyone was panicking, now Philly's playing better. That talk has gone away. I like how he was accountable for what happened, even if, as SNY MLB insider Andy Martino says, it might not have been his fault. But I do think what Todd said makes the most sense. Right now, the Mets are not in a good place as a team. And when something like this happens, you're just like, oh, not the of course this happened now, you know? It doesn't seem like an exception it seems more like the rule and then they go out they lose an opportunity in the first inning of the game and then they can't hit in a band box mm -hmm. of a ballpark in Cincinnati get only one run lose a, on a walk off I mean Todd that's got to be so frustrating if you're there well by the way just the reaction of Jay Bruce alone tells yeah. you how they're feeling collectively in the clubhouse because he's frustrated as it is right now he's just finally starting to come around a little bit He's got an RBI opportunity in the he gets first two inning, unassisted. and he gets the bat taken out of yeah. his hand as if he popped it up to the catcher. So that in and of itself was like indicative, I think, of what they're feeling collectively. And by the way, a Jay Bruce or anybody else 
Th this could become a delicate situation because athletes are sensitive. Athletes are often insecure about their situations anyway. And yeah, there you go. And don't necessarily need a lot of excuses to question authority. It's not that hard to get down on your manager because your manager generally is the guy that delivers the bad news. The guy that says, Jay, you know what? Uh, I know you're a right fielder, but you got to play first some of the time now. Or hey, guess what? I'm sitting you against this tough lefty. So if you're a player and you're thinking, I'm not saying they're there with Callaway at all. I'm not saying yeah. that. But if you get to the point where you're like, well, who's this guy? Can he do his job? That's a dangerous place to be. That's where the players are from what my understanding and my reporting. They were in Philadelphia right at the beginning of the season. Like, if we're going to win, it's going to be in spite of this clown who's managing the team. Now, Callaway doesn't earn that with one very bad blunder that he had today, but that is something that certainly any manager needs to be careful of. It doesn't take a lot, Todd, for a player to complain about his manager, right? Todd, quickly, I mean, we may not be there. The point Andy makes is a good one, but if you are Jay Bruce, is it, does any part of you, especially given the way the Mets are playing right now, want to hear Mickey Calloway, whether it's an actual big-time address or not, talk to the team a little bit, say, hey, guys, my bad. Let's move forward. Let's play better fundamental base. I, I would actually be surprised if he didn't have some mm -hmm. uh, dialogue with them internally as well because um, in, in a situation like that, I like the fact, as you guys all alluded to, that he, he fell on the sword. He took full blame. It may well not have been his responsibility. It may be, hey, here's the lineup. Now you guys go do, put it in the computer, give it to the umpire, get it up on the board. Um, and But at the end of the day, he's the one that's accountable. And I think from a Jay Bruce perspective or anybody else's perspective, they're going to like the fact that he takes that responsibility, puts it on his own shoulders, and I bet he did have, did have some dialogue with them internally.